FSD version 12.3 is rolling out. That's exciting news, at least for those who've got version 12 in the first place. But there are competitors out there who are trying to do even better, including Xpeng. Oh, that'll be interesting to see. So, of course, uh, I'm Brian. Welcome to Futurasa. <laughs> got Herbert joining me today. Herbert uh, is brighter and he makes us brighter. Head over to his channel to find out more. Link in the description, all that good stuff. Herbert, I don't know if you heard the big news. Uh, version 12.3 is rolling out. Uh, and for those who actually have access to it, this could be very exciting. Could arguably be called version 13. Now, you and I have seen quite a bit of footage. Uh, what do you What do you make of it? Yeah, so first of all, Elon Musk saying this is a big release should arguably be called version 13. And people are accusing him because he said that before. He said at one time before in the past. So, you know, you need to kind of uh, take that with a grain of salt. Having said that, when Elon is speaking, I think you people need to kind of understand from his perspective what he's thinking about. And he's talking about, you know, right, the, the structure of the code that was that, that was being replaced or updated, right? So it's significant. And so he knows for sure a difference between a point, a point release and a big, you know, one point release. So, all right, so that's, you know, he, he said this before, right? This is uh, gonna be on fire, it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be mind blowing. But it's also true that version 12.1 and uh, the other smaller releases, they have not yet spread this. They haven't gone past just the original you know, very, very small number. I think uh, I think Tesla Scope says it's less than 2% of, of beta users are currently using the version 12. And so there's a reason. Uh, we know that it still has uh, issues where there's some a couple critical issues that has happened. I think uh, Farzad was being driven around by Bradford Ferguson and in their own clip, they showed at the very last second, the last two minutes, two pretty big issues where the car was driving into the intersection and another car uh, was heading in that direction as well. So you can't spread this out if there's still critical issues. Having said that, as you and I have been watching so many, many videos, and it's just unbelievable how many edge cases this new neural net version can solve. So it's a balance between, oh my God, right? All these edge cases are being resolved now. At the same time, it still has these critical issues. So I think that's this is a significance. If this version 12.3 is actually as big as Elon says, and it actually solves these critical issues, you know, this could be a big deal. This could be the thing, right? And then the question is asked, why would there be critical issues and yet solve the kind of the edge cases? Wouldn't you first make sure the car doesn't do critical issues? This is different. This is neural net. This thing's learning on its own. Uh, and so it's it's gonna figure things out on its own, its own time frame, and, and depending on the videos that it's shown. The good news is that there's actually a path right? You would send it more videos of good driving and maybe even more videos of defensive drivers to really know when to accelerate, when to actually be extra careful. Those things can be done. And now we've heard just a couple of weeks ago, right? Elon saying that we don't think we're going to be compute constrained for FSD by the end of this year. That is the big news. I think that if you take that forward and realize that they have the data, now they're going to have the compute then all of these things has a higher chance of being solved. Maybe not all, but a lot of it could be solved. And considering there are infinite cases when driving, you can't test all of them without rolling it out to more people. And that's what yeah. they've done. So they've rolled it out to enough people to get enough data to know what's missing. And unlike a heuristic if-then set of codes, in this case, instead of tweaking the output, you tweak the input. You say, here's here's some more cases to mm -hmm. consider. Please look at these and train. And that's a, a really sharp way of looking at it. Is this a step change? Absolutely. Absolutely. There are situations you and I have seen videos of it handling where I wouldn't have even asked it to in the past because I knew it was beyond the scope of what it generally would be expected to do. Maybe it could have handled them, but generally not. Some of the things it does in parking lots and roundabouts, mm -hmm. Bradford Ferguson from <laughs> Rebellionaire took it out, and I think he did 60 roundabouts, and it handled 58 of them. I, or it may have been 80, and it handled 78 of them. That's yeah. Those are... Those are hard for humans, and yeah. it it's handling them. So that's very exciting. But you know, uh, others are working <laughs> on it. You know, Xiaopeng here is uh, continuing to challenge Tesla FSD with their uh, self-driving, which is now available mm -hmm. throughout China. 
First question is, do you believe it? You know, I think, uh, yeah, you never underestimate any competitors. You should believe it as much as you can. Uh, having said that, now that we know what happened with Cruz, right? We all believe Cruz was real. And then we find out that they, they know that was like the Wizard of Oz, right? Every time that they're, you're driving and you, the customer, are in the car, you don't see a driver and you're going, oh my God, this is great. But what you don't know is that there's a, a bunch of people watching the car, driving the car, teleoperating it. And then in case it does something wrong, they control it. They press the gas, the, the accelerator, they make sure that it's, uh, it doesn't make any wrong moves. So, you know, that that's, uh, you know, we don't know if this is what these guys are doing as well. But, you know, again, it's uh, what we need to look at is how big of the data set the Xiaopeng have. So if they're able to now do their ADAS across all of the China, that's a, a big deal. It gives them more space to learn and capture data. But Tesla's been doing that since, you know, five, 50, 60, 60 years ago. So they need to catch up in number of drives. They need to know, we need to understand how much data center uh, compute that they have. But again, yeah, you cannot, uh, you can't. Uh, and then you have to understand, are we talking about here the same thing? Is this ADAS or is this full self-driving? What, what do they really mean? All good points. We need to see if there is a wizard behind this curtain too. I think mm -hmm. if Cruz had just been honest and said, look, we're using digital Sherpas right. to handle the edge cases until yeah. all of them are solved and we're improving the number of uh, disengagements and all that, then, or, or I guess interventions would be the correct term. A disengagement is when you have to actually physically take control uh, versus just giving it a little, hitting the pedal or, or, or nudging it. And I think if they'd have been honest about that, uh, investors wouldn't have been furious when they found out the truth, regulators as well, customers as well. I think they handled it very poorly entirely. Uh, but you're right. It doesn't matter what they're doing because either it works or it doesn't. And if someone else, it's not like this is the atomic race where the first winner is the winner. Uh, there can be two, three, five, a hundred solutions that work without killing off all the others. Um, but this would be an interesting one. So of course, the first thing I had to do was uh, head over to the old uh, YouTube and find some videos of it actually being yeah. used. And you know what? I couldn't mm -hmm. find a single one. Yeah, two years, three years. Can yeah. you tell me, um, is this supposed to be neural nets? I can't tell you. It It is a, <laughs> we don't have, they didn't I say don't, that. I couldn't find that information and I looked, mm -hmm. so we don't know. I would imagine that they would want you to believe it is whether or not it is because that appears to be the path, uh, but we mm -hmm. don't know. And there are a lot of people who would have different thoughts on it um, that would say, you know, it's gotta be, <sighs> it's gotta be a certain thing or another for it to work. Um, we also still see people. I see people as recently as yesterday on X saying, well, you know, the bears are saying that it needs LIDAR and radar and all these other sensors that it doesn't have. And Elon won't talk about it. And the silence is, is getting very suspicious guys. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about it. If, if you're taking your advice from the bears, you're going to miss all the boats. There will be no boats left for you by the time you're done. I even talking to people in the industry, you get very different uh, beliefs on the correct path forward. And until someone is able to actually solve it globally, you know, in a, in a wider than a small market environment, you're going to have those kinds of cases. A friend of mine was in Phoenix yesterday and was able to hail a driverless Waymo. And he thought it was magic, terrifying magic, but magic nonetheless. <laughs> and he said, but it makes sense here. The streets are the easiest I've ever seen. They're all wide and straight wow. and it's a big grid. And I did tell him that they operate in, in San Francisco as well, which is quite the opposite, but I have yet to experience either one. So I'm very excited to get a chance to do that at some point. It's going to be interesting to see. And there's a lot of different approaches, different uh, possible correct paths forward. Any uh, thoughts on on who's actually apart yeah. from Tesla. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. So uh, first of all, I was just trying to find out, I was researching a little bit there, trying to see if uh, Xiaopeng or others are doing neural nets or anything like that. And you get your sprinkling of <laughs> great headlines, right? That China's leading and all that. 
And uh, of course they're going to do that. They want, it's all branding, it's all marketing. They want to do this, but that's drive deeper, <laughs> clearly drive in clearly. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, the way I look at it is, first of all, I look at Tesla and look at Tesla, what they're doing and what their approach is and how fast the progress is with version 12. Okay. So that's step one. And then it almost doesn't matter. It's like, it's, it's, it matters, but it doesn't matter what the others are doing because what matters is can Tesla manufacture the most vehicles with, let's say everybody achieves FSD. Let's say they get it a year from now, the others, uh, or even they solve it earlier. Who can implement it faster across the world as many cars are being built with it in it, right? That's the key thing. Um, so the the ones with LiDAR, as we know, they're, they're dead in the water, right? They're not going to be able to outfit any car, maybe Anvil, they're losing so much money, right? We found out that crews, $250,000 per car loss kind of thing. Like it's, it's expensive to do this research work. So you got to add the whole thing, the business models, the economics, the scale, the technology, the dr miles driven. So it's it's one of those things where it's great, but you know the, you have to look at the whole holistic approach. So I don't think it's a competitor to Tesla, but it's more like, sure, that's great. They can come out and offer their own, but... It's what matters to me as an investor is Tesla going to be able to take advantage of this and can they make money? The market is so big that for let's have multiple competitors and it's still not going to put a dent in Tesla's ability to grow revenue margins and so forth. My concern with the claims from someone like Xiaopeng is they're so small and their funding has been so relatively limited compared to anyone else who's been trying this for much longer than them, including Cruise and Waymo. If there was one company that has spent 10 billion and it didn't work, that would be one thing. But there are a dozen companies that have spent 10 billion without reaching what Xiaopeng claims to have done for a fraction of the price. It's not to say it's impossible. It's just to say mm -hmm. it, and, it, it's, it raises questions. And like you said earlier, just what you just pointed out, where's the videos? So Where's it's one thing for you to say that, and it's another thing to show videos of it going around in a, you know, in a, a nice uh, neighborhood, but it's another thing to actually show 80 <laughs> times around a roundabout, you know, yeah. all these edge cases. And it's like all these videos we're now starting to see from edge case. In fact, the a user called edge case and mm -hmm. uh, AI driver posting these all the time mm -hmm. of these incredible maneuvers that the Tesla version 12 is able to do just like a human would do. I love to see other car companies showing those edge cases one at a time, multiple hundreds, like we're seeing with Tesla. And w yes, where is their whole Mars catalog, their Bradford Ferguson, their edge case, their AI driver and others. So we don't know, but we will find out hopefully soon enough. Uh, head over to Brighter with Herbert. Uh, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? I'll leave it into them in the comments below. And to everybody else, like, subscribe, do the usual. Stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots uh, uh, in the back of your own robo-taxi, perhaps. <laughs>